وَإِن تَعْجَبْ فَعْجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ أَيْذَا كُنَّا تُرَابًا أَيْنَّا لَفِي خَلْقٍ جَدِيدٍ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ الْأَغْلَالُ فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, viewers and listeners, welcome to a special Q&A session with Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan where we are going to answer the questions that you guys have sent in to our email address questions at the hotseatpodcast.com The questions that I have with me today are all related to the first episode we released Who can you trust in the modern day da'wah scene? And we're going to have these Q&A sessions in between every single podcast we release. And there'll always be questions related to topics we've discussed. One thing we're really keen on having here in the hot seat is a- an opportunity to answer your questions and concerns about the topics we discussed. So without further ado, let's get into this first session where we're going to be answering questions on who can you trust in the modern day da'wah scene. So I have three questions in total for you, Ustad. The first one is if someone is calling to innovation openly, for example, a khariji calling towards khuruj openly, does the khujja, i.e. the proof, have to be established upon him before calling him an innovator? Or can he be warned against and be labelled an innovator before his misguidance is made clear to him? No. Um, The person who's been accused of khawarijism, or somebody saying he's a khariji, I also want, I feel like it's important and it's necessary. People need to verify because some issues that I've seen people accuse others of being khariji is not khuruj. It has nothing to do with khawarijism. Like for example, recently I, I saw a brother say, uh, you know, anyone who says that tariq salah is kufr akbar is khariji. No, this is uh, this is views of Ahl Sunnah. You can't say that. If you abandon the prayer, you're, you're kufr akbar. It's not khaw- it's not it's nothing to do with khawarijism. It's qawl min Ahl Sunnah. Uh, which is the strongest view of Ahlul Sunnah. So, people need to verify and know what makes a person khawarijism is and what isn't. Uh, because a lot of people today, subhanAllah, they have fallen into irja themselves. So, everything for them, it's, you know, my heart is good and no actions are needed. So, at first, I will say to verify what is the mu'taqad and the belief of the khawarij. Uh, what is the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah? Then you can say what's. Second is that if it becomes clear to you after you know you've done your research and your s- person who has knowledge, then hujja is needed to be established on the person. You have to prove to the person that their view is wrong, and remove that doubt from the person and explain to them what is right from what is wrong. Okay, even th- even if he's calling to us openly, it doesn't change that. The proof still needs to be established. Yes, proof needs to be, okay. needs to be established. Okay, the second question I have, and I think it's important to provide a bit of context around this. We mentioned on the podcast Imam Anawi and how we fell into issues with the names and attributes of Allah. And you said that the proof had to be have as established up, uh, against him or upon him. And I said, are you really expected to believe that he was calling to Islam for this long and the proof wasn't shown to him and you said yeah I have to believe that I have to have khusnudhan the question that's come in here is regarding the comment on Imam Nawawi rahimahullah in his minhaj when he discusses matters relating to aqidah in which he differs with Ahlul Sunnah on some of these matters you notice he discusses the opinion of, Ahlu, uh, of Ahlul Hadith but he then differs with them does this not suggest that the hujjah the proof has been made very good question. I was really amazed with that person, mashallah. Barik. The minhaj that they're talking about here is a sharh of Sahih Muslim. Uh, just to make it clear, because okay. the Imam Nawawi has a kitab on the fiqh shafi'i where he summarized it from the Muharrar of Abu, Sq- Abu Qasim uh, al Rafi'i's kitab, Al uh, Muharrar. That's not the book that the person is talking about here. They're talking okay. about the sharh of Sahih Muslim. It's called Al Minhaj. And it's true, sometimes he mentions Mu'taqadu Ahl Sunnah, and then he mentions the belief of the Ahl Kalam. And then he'll say, Al Hadith, believe this. That doesn't mean that the proof was established on him. Because establishing the proof means whatever doubt is with you is removed. And whatever's right is then being told to you. That's what we're talking about here. 
Just because I know the many views out there doesn't mean the proof has been established on me. And that's what Nawawi didn't receive, rahimahullah ta'ala, iqamatul hujjah. It's that, uh, that the path is cleared for him. To bayan lahu al The path is made clear to him that this is the right way. We don't have that. And an Imam al-Nawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, is an Imam, 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 Imam haqqan. He was a great Imam. And a man like him, if he was informed of what was wrong from what is right, with the sincerity that we see of, of this great man, the nobility that's in this great man, and Imam al-Nawi, we know he would have left it. Jazakallah khair. The final question I have for you, and this is more of a practical question. When someone in our local city, for example, let's say London, has fallen into innovation, who exactly establishes the proof on him? And who lawfully labels him an innovator? Is it the students of knowledge in the city? Or is it the big scholars that are outside the city? And if it's a big scholar, then how practical is it for the big scholar who's living in a different country to speak to that particular person? If the person fell into an issue of a mistake, and it's a, v- a mistake that we mentioned last time, for example, he goes against Ahlul Sunnah in the source in which they take their evidence from, then that doesn't require scholars. That doesn't require sort of scholars. Like if the person says, I'm not going to take the hadith of the Messenger and things like that, it doesn't require the scholars. This is Mazdar um, Taraqi. But if the person fell into a, uh, other issues of aqidah, mm-hmm. mistakes, then this is a tabdi'ah, uh, is a mas'ala ijtihadiyah. Tabdi'ah, to label a person a mubtadi'ah. It goes back to Ahlul Ijtihad, the Ahlul Ilm the people of knowledge. They're the ones who label this person an innovator. They're the ones who... Gr- and the issue of takfir as well. They're the ones who do it. But it's not left for the uh, nas and definitely not left... It's not Sorry, it's not left for the students of knowledge and it's definitely not left for the general mass. It's not generally left for the... Uh, it's not left for the general mass. So it's something that the scholars, the people of knowledge, who are allowed to do ijtihad, who even if they get it wrong, they get one reward for it. And if they get it right, they get two rewards for it. They're the ones who can do this. So just address the second part of the question, which is how practical is it for a scholar to uh, speak to a person in a city, like the imam of a masjid in a, in a city? Alhamdulillah, the communication in the world today is very good. So the people go back to the people of knowledge. They t- present the situation of the person to, to, to the sheikh, and they tell it with fair, sincere, genuine uh, manner. Like Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, when Yahya ibn Ya'mar and Humayd ibn Abdul Rahman al-Himari came to him about the issue of the Qadariya who came out in Iraq uh, and what they were saying. And when they formed Abdullah ibn Umar, they told about these people who they were, what they were like, everything. Then Abdullah ibn Umar gave them a ruling. He said, فَأَخْبِرْهُمْ أَنِّي بَرِئُ مِنْهُمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ بُرَعَاءُ مِنِّي Tell them I am free from them and they are free from me. And then he told them Allah is not going to accept their righteous deeds until they believe in the Qadr. So they took it back to Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and they asked him and he clarified it for them. So the people should go back to scholars like that. Go and contact the scholars. Ask them. Inform the situation correctly. Be fair in the way you put the situation to the sheikh because the sheikh is going to answer it in the way you put it to him. He's going to say whatever question you ask him. If you say, sheikh, if a person drinks alcohol, what's the ruling regarding them? And the sheikh goes, that person's a fasiq. And the person you're applying on wasn't drinking alcohol, he's drinking apple juice. Mm. But he had in a bottle that you couldn't understand. You can't apply the Sheikh's fatwa here right now because the Sheikh's fatwa was based on someone who drank alcohol. Ustad, Jazakallah Khairan, very, very helpful answers. Uh, until next time, fi imanillahi wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallah fiqh. I hope you found the answers to those questions beneficial. Again, a reminder, if you have any questions on any of the topics we've discussed so far, email your questions in to questions at the hotseatpodcast.com. That's questions at the hotseatpodcast.com.